Welcome to the GMBN podcast. Now, this episode, we have a mental exercise on the cards. The year is 2030. Kanye West is living in the West Wing of the White House. Boris Johnson's hair is still in power after a Gomet-esque wrong trousers upriding. And Mel Goodrich has taken her spot as a monarch of the Commonwealth after the Great British Bake Off Rebellion of 2021. We thought we were divided country now. Wait until you see fist fights in the streets over whose meringue rose better. Now, mountain biking still exists. Steve Jones spends his retirement gleefully tending to a wood fire in the Welsh Valleys, bathing in the gentle flame and the warmth of vindication as e-bikes are now bloody everywhere. In the next valley over, there is this man, Chris Porter, mountain biking's very own Ian Hislop, a habitual of speaker of truth to power. Now, he is still making weird and wonderful creations. He gets up early, having the rule book on toast for breakfast before embarking on his daily duties. Things have changed. He's even, he's even managed to shape bottles to bikes now, as opposed to doing it the other way around. But what will our bikes look like in this far-flung future? A future that would be funny to think about. If only it wasn't so bloody heart-jarringly close to potential reality. Chris, welcome. Oh, How are you doing? Pretty good, actually. Pretty good. So <laughs> thinking about into the 2030s, that reminds me that I'm actually getting old. And when I look at my picture <laughs> license, it's going to need renewing. Yeah. <laughs> Not just the picture, but the whole bloody license. But anyway, yeah, so I am getting old. But, are, you, um, are you somebody that, do you think in 11 years' time, will you still be out on bikes? Are you... Uh, yeah, oh, yeah, hopefully, yeah. yeah. I think, um, you know, we we had a mental exercise a few years ago where we were thinking, you know, motorbikes or bicycles, if you could only ride one, mm -hmm. what would it be? And I love them both, yes. you know, so it's, it was a hard question, but in the end, it's the bicycle, mm -hmm. because the bicycle brings you that sort of feeling of useful joy, um, that freewheeling, yes. you know, the... The idea of the first ride down the street, freewheeling. It comes mm. back every time when you freewheel yeah. a bicycle. It's, a motorbike is something else. It's like, you know, it's like your um, bicycle was the gateway drug, if you like. Yes, I know what you mean. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, the motorbikes are the class A. But in the end... I know what you mean. There are friends of mine who have now gone on to harder stuff, i.e. moto, and I'm still quite having recreational Saturday <laughs> afternoon weekends and yeah, able yeah. to get some sense out of me afterwards, I guess. Yeah. No, I think that, that love them both, but I think, you know, come 2030, will it be socially acceptable to be burning petrol for fun? Yes, that's um, true. I... I is, is it socially acceptable to be burning petrol for fun now? Well, yeah, I think... Um, is is it? Well, the, I think the Formula One circus is going mm. through a similar sort of mm. wider question. You know, you see mm. Formula E and stuff now. I yeah. mean, in terms of e-bikes, e-bikes are yeah. obviously great. I think less cars on the road, yeah. the better. Yeah. But they do raise questions about, you know, batteries and, and disposal of batteries. Yeah. When you're obviously, you've kind of worked going from somebody that's tinkering on probably sort of a, a more um, sort of on the smaller level in terms of forks and stuff, which probably, although perhaps when people are cracking CSUs every other ride, mm -hmm. it is something, they are consuming a lot of parts. Oh, but going yeah, yeah. from that to being a frame sort of, you know, being inside of that thing, is, is, it, is that a concern, the, the consumable nature of our, of our sport? Oh, it's a, it's a massive concern. I mean, I... When we started Mojo all those years ago, it was as a service centre. It was, first of all, to fix shocks that no one else was fixing mm -hmm. because when the shock is broken, it renders the full suspension bike useless. Yes. Essentially yeah. broken. Uh, you can't use it. Or you can only use it you know, in a very narrow range. Mm -hmm. so, um, so that's how we started, to try and actually keep stuff going. And... You know, we always prided ourselves on being able to hold all of the stock, all of the little parts, 100 machine parts in every shock and fork, and we'd hold them all. And they mm. change them every bloody year. <laughs> um, <laughs> but, yeah, quarter of a micron smaller ball bearing, you know. But yeah, we, um, we kept all the parts so we could just fix stuff rather than replacing assemblies. Mm -hmm. 
the idea of replacing an assembly that someone has put together in the other part of the world um, where it's cheaper to assemble, that's not, you know, that's not, to me, that's not sustainable. Mm -hmm. I'm an absolute anti-capitalist. I'm stuck in a capitalist country on mm -hmm. a capitalist circus, but I don't have to yes, do... I yeah, don't have totally. to do... You so, don't have to dance. <laughs> no, so we... Um, we always try to make things last, and that's what we're doing now. You know, we're, we are using up the planet's resources to make bicycles, but we should make them good enough to last. Yeah, because in some ways I think the bicycle industry, you know, road bikes and mountain bikes, it, there's this term that I've been... It seems to be cropping up a lot recently in my conversation, so it probably says more mm. about me than it does about it. Mm. But it's kind of like um, auto-carnivorous. So, for instance, X Factor is auto carnivorous because every time somebody wins a new one they take the exact same place in the lexicon of celebrity mm. as the previous winner and it immediately erases it and there's yeah. also an element of that with bikes i think perhaps yeah. people the model year i think is almost kind of a plague on bikes oh because massively. people feel they need the new paint job because they're worried about value as much as anything and retaining value yeah massively and 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 when we look with a cynical eye at not just the model year, you know, this, this yearly dash to create something new. Mm -hmm. But we look at, um, you've got just full suspension mountain bikes without mm -hmm. talking about hardtails or anything else. You, you'll have, in a decent sized range, you'll have a 100 mil travel bike. Mm -hmm. That'll be available 29, 27.5. Yeah. Be available aluminium or carbon. Then you'll have the 110 mil travel bike, again with the same <laughs> three options that multiply to, yeah. to sort of six, and 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 then you get up to about 170 mil travel, and then it goes to the downhill bike in 10 mil steps. So we're being told that we need literally 30 different bikes just to ride in the woods with our mm -hmm. mates. Yeah. Well, did did you not believe in the 160 one? Why did you think you needed a 110 and a 170? Can, Was that not good enough? Well, I can tell you why. I think it's what? because the, for, for good or for bad, well, I think probably for bad, this sport is it's basically it's dominated by men and there's the fragile male ego of needing a... I think that's a big part of it. I think people are always scared. People, are, people coming from more of a cross-country background. It's probably not as black and white as that, but I think yeah. people coming from more cross-country background live in fear they're going to be undergunned and dropped mm. on the descents and people worrying about the climbs they're sometimes worried they're going to be undergunned and dropped on the climbs <laughs> you know yeah. what i mean and we've been sold this importance when actually it's not important yeah i i think there's i mean there's more to it than that because i think racing is such a small part of the sport itself um or the pastime you know, we call it a sport, then it becomes racing, doesn't it? Yes. The, the, the sport element is so small compared to the pastime element. Um, but, yeah, it's, it's just attempting to get us to buy more. Yes, it is. isn't it? You know, we, which we don't need. And so what we try to do is to say, look, we've got one model. That's the one we ride. Yeah. That's the one we believe in. Yeah. If you wanted something slightly different, there are loads of people making something like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're right. Go on, yeah, go on, yeah. go and buy one of those. Um, so, you know, we had it so much over the last couple of years. Yeah, that's really nice bike, but I need this. Well, go and buy someone else's bike. Yes, they do that. They yeah. do that really well. Yeah, yeah. Or oh, it rides really well. I wonder what it'd be like with a slightly steeper head angle. I don't bloody know. Go and ride something else with a slightly steeper head. <laughs> yeah, no, this you're is right. the one we make. Yes, yeah. <laughs> Come and ride this. No. But anyway, we've got off topic. Sorry. 2030. Yes. Oh, I was going to say, now, if we envisage, instead of perhaps trying to put the bicycle world's wrongs to right, yeah. if we perhaps look at going forward, yeah. are there any um, bike companies this side of the pond or otherwise that you look at and you think, Oh, they're doing stuff really, really, really well. No, I think we, we're all, there are a few people trying really hard, doing a really good job, and everyone else has just got a marketing department to tell the public that they're doing a really good yes, job. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, um, 
Yes, there are good people doing good work in the bicycle industry. I just think that we're all we're all sort of victims of the market that has developed. Yeah. Um, you know, as a for instance, we the mountain bike has developed along a certain you know, along a certain um, uh, path. Path. I was trying to think trajectory. Yes. <laughs> That's it. I'm getting sort of. Three syllables, please. Senile now. <laughs> so um, oh. it's, it's developed on this certain trajectory, and the development has not been... Um, it's not been about making the bike better in any way. Mm -hmm. It's been about making the bike out of different materials. So most of the development in mountain biking has been about trying to make things that work perfectly well mm -hmm. in one material yeah. and and weren't the issue that stopped it going around the corner yes, yeah. or stopped it going up the hill. Um, but they got redesigned into a slightly different material. So we've mm -hmm. ended up with carbon fiber everything and um, you know, materials technology coming out of our ears. But we've still got the derailleur hanging off the rear wheel. Yeah, you this know, is something I find very strange. I mean, I'm sure they could build a far more robust derailleur and transmission. It would be obviously be a lot very heavy. Yeah. I find it strange that I would, you know, I'm not I'm not a powerful, you know, mm. gym, you know, obsessed person that's churning mm. out huge watts. I just spin around. And I find it quite strange that I can wear out a drivetrain and you think of cars or aeroplanes. Yeah, yeah. And I think that's quite a peculiar sort but, of entrapment we find ourselves in. Yeah, it it is. I mean, we, it you're you're wearing it out because you're you're essentially putting a lot of side load on it. You know, it's yeah. you're only in you're only in line in one certain gear, and you know, there's a really nice little experiment that you should do one day: sit down and stick it in first gear and ride up a really steep hill, mm -hmm. and then look on the block, get it in line, mm -hmm. and then stand up and ride up. Mm -hmm. and you'll find you use less energy oh, and you get up there quicker. Yes, yeah. And the dry train will last longer. Mm -hmm. And do you think that... <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, that's always an added bonus there. Do you think that um, belt drives have their place? Is that the way you go? Or would you no, go to a, no. a gearbox with a... No, no, I mean, the, the, Honda did it perfectly well. They had a, a chain. They had a drive that sort of shifted mm -hmm. across the cassette that allowed... They had other systems as well, like um, uh, spinning eccentrics that drove basically a pulley with a one-way on a freewheel, right one-way yes. drive. So they had all sorts of different ways of transferring rotational drive back to a rotational drive for the rear wheel through a gearbox, um, so through a modifier. Um, it potentially sounds like the bike of 2030 will have the drivetrain of a 2006 bike that's still that's since been melted down. Well, exactly. You know, we're, <laughs> we're, but it'd be, it'd be a, it's in a plastic bottle somewhere that Honda. <laughs> yeah. The uh, I think having the putting the derailleur into the frame is not rocket science, but once you've done that, it allows you or forces you to redesign every other component on the bicycle. Mm -hmm. Because everything, yes, everything builds off this drive system yes. yeah. outwards. Uh, so once you've done that, you're you're hooked into redesigning the whole thing. And so we come back to this model year thing. Mm. That's never going to happen, is it? No. We have time to design stickers this year, <laughs> <laughs> and we can change the geometry numbers enough so that it falls within our uh, falls within our margin of error. Yes. Well, isn't that what everyone got into mountain biking for? Anyway, stickers. Well, we're just back much. to square one. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> so, with, you know, I think the mountain biking industry, or at least a lot of a lot of the way the mountain biking industry is perceived, mm -hmm. is there's one hot topic at any one time. Yeah. So, for years it was 29 is a bad. Now it's, you know, now it's yeah. perhaps like people have moved on past the head angle and people talk about reach now and reach is the magic number and yeah yeah and it seems that we we're simply only discussing the the thing most easily understood by the lowest common denominator people people aren't arguing about things yeah they're arguing about things that are visual and they can just go oh that's it now do you think that in terms of geometry design i mean where do you see 
the Geometron going in the next couple of years? Are you, are you still thinking, are you happy with the numbers you've got? Are you limited by any factors? Would you like to experiment? A bit so, so we haven't really changed the angles for about four years. Um, seat angle, bottom bracket height, wheelbase, chain stay length, head angle, all of those things have stayed almost static because they pretty much work. There's no point faffing around with that until you've made the other stuff work. Mm -hmm. There's so much stuff on the bicycle that doesn't work. Um, or is, it, you know, that the geometry is now not the thing that's holding it back. Mm -hmm. You know, you've now got people are actually producing forks with you know, offsets in the low 40s for 29er wheels. Um, things have really moved on. Um, so it's not the geometry that's holding it back now. Now it's now it needs to take another step somewhere else. Um, so we we did with the G1 this year. What well, we changed the design to allow us to run the different wheel sizes and all the different wheel options. So you can run the hybrid and the 29 or the 27.5 and you can just buy the same frame. Mm -hmm. And we've got what are called mutators to allow us to change the seat stay length and the chain stay length. Oh, okay, yeah. So that we can change everything as, as the bike grows from small to XL or double XL, things can change so that everyone can get the same geometry and riding experience. Mm -hmm. Um, seat angles get steeper, chain stays get longer. There's a lot, lot of options, but that's all sorted. Um, we, the big thing that we did this year was not the geometry. Mm. Um, it was the just literally putting spherical bearings in the eyelets of the shock. Yes. Yeah. So that, so that you don't get stiction as the shock is being pushed into its travel. Mm -hmm. And we go back to Honda. I rode that bike. Um, we were in the frame to distribute it, and um, we had a massive box arrive from HRC to Mojo Towers, literally full-size bike, fully built up wow. in this massive box with padlocks. And we're like cornering, mm -hmm. prying the corner open to see if we can <laughs> see it. And uh, um, But they literally let us ride it for a few days, and the suspension was absolutely sublime. Mm -hmm. It was a single pivot. It should have been rubbish. Mm. But it had spherical bearings. Yes. And it had a decent amount of shims on the shock. Mm. All really simple stuff. But you can't patent it. And that's the bicycle thing, yes. isn't it? If you can't patent it, there's no point building it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if, you, yeah. If, you, if you can't patent, give it a stupid name and patent it. Um, so I suppose there's the whole thing, if you build it, they will come. If you paint into it, people will buy it. <laughs> Do you well, know people won't be able to copy you? <laughs> yeah, that's true. But I, but my belief in patents is that it it freezes development. You never develop something in a vacuum. You you're you're part of society. You were brought up by people. You were educated by other people. You worked with other people. Mm -hmm. Any any novel thing you come up with is as a result of that. So yes. you know, even if yeah. you were really clever and you worked out a very small part of it. Um, then to freeze development at that point means that someone else has got to develop two steps to get past your patent. Yeah. Oops. Just it's just the, all so, the truth that's going on in this room. It's oh, <laughs> yeah. So um, because it sounds like then Honda really they, they they were their downhill program was fantastic. Yeah, yeah. And some of the riders that are still kicking about today yeah. probably have a lot to thank them for. Yeah. But why for the people that perhaps aren't so involved, myself included. Why yeah. did Honda leave the mountain bike? Because they made such a splash. Well, I, their bikes never saw production in the same way. I, so. I don't know. I got the same letter as was published at mm. the time. Um, uh, and it, was, it just stated business and technical reasons. Mm. So you'd have to point a finger at the UCI and say, that's not very useful. They're having having a rule that says you can't have prototypes and yes yeah and yeah i just think you know that it seems you can't have a prototype but but you can take drugs have a few months off take a holiday <laughs> and then turn up and race again yeah that's fucking shit isn't it? yeah 
it does seem a bit sorry about the F word there. Oh, that's all right. But it's yeah. but you know I think so go now we're really off topic. So yeah, we go okay. to the enduro thing yeah. now and it's like Enduro should be about endurance, toughness, mm -hmm. racing your bicycle, mostly downhill with a few uphills. Um, and they had a little problem with the guys taking drugs. We don't know how little because we still haven't found out who the other guys with the adverse analytical findings were. Mm -hmm. But now this year, they're under the auspices of the UCI. Mm -hmm. So what we do know is that you'll be able to get a therapeutic use exemption mm -hmm. because that's allowed within the UCI rules. Yes, yeah. And what we do know is that there's a huge amount of elite athletes with asthma. Mm -hmm. oh, just all this exercise-induced asthma. Yeah. <laughs> and um, I've heard of, um, in Norwegian ski schools, them sending out children in the cold to prompt asthma-like symptoms. Oh my God, little, little Timmy's coming down with asthma. Get him to the doctor quickly. And you know yeah. what I mean? Get him and, some clenbuterol. Yeah. yeah, and I've also, so. you know, I mean, I'm sure I have heard, you know, people obviously have quite strong opinions on the UCI. Yeah. And, um, but you know, I yeah. did hear rampant stories a couple of years ago that you probably wouldn't hear now yeah. in regards to, you know, all sorts of... No, off colour things going on in on the UCI, on the yeah. Sort of US scene. Yeah, absolutely. And I think the the way of getting around that is to obviously police the, the drugs properly, that's mm -hmm. fine. And if somebody's caught taking them, that should be the end of it. You know, you that is you shouldn't be allowed to race in in that mm -hmm. sport again. Yes, surely. Yes, I, I would I would agree. Surely. Um, um and then design the courses that minimise the effect of drugs taken. You know, if I was... Yeah. So, for me, if I was the promoter of the last EWS after the one where mm -hmm. Martin got caught with accidentally, in yeah. accidentally, of course, yeah, of course. Um, ingesting something, I'd have just made all the stages chainless. <laughs> yeah, just, yeah. I'd have just had a, a commissaire <laughs> at the top taking the chains off. Yeah, you're right. Um, well, I mean, when you say it like that... So, Just, so the yeah. bikes are twenty thirty, no chains, <laughs> single pivot with well, spherical bearings. Yeah, I mean the next thing, the yeah. the on topic thing at the moment is people gleefully recanting in any f online forum or comment section that have them mm -hmm. about how you know everything looks the same, mm -hmm. and then someone does something different. For yeah. instance, the trust fork. Yeah, yeah. And everybody says it's horrifying. Similarly yeah. with bikes, everything yeah. looks like a session. Yeah. Something doesn't look like a session. Oh my God, cover it away. Look yeah. at an ivory tower. It's horrible, yeah. my yeah. eyes, you know? Yeah. Do you think there's a place for, you know, I've, I've heard before we've spoken about possibly the limitations of uh, telescopic forks. Yeah, yeah. Especially in a sort of an aggressive yet single crown setup. Yeah. Do you think there's a place going forward for a, a highly tuned linkage fork? Absolutely. Um, I'm not sure whether it would look like the trust mm -hmm. or the motion, both of whom are doing a really good job and my hat's off to them for for attempting um, for attempting to build a linkage fork. Um, I think something simpler mm -hmm. would would be a better job, really. Yeah, I you think know, something. The only thing that offends me about the message, sorry, the the trust fork, is it's called the message. Yeah, that that makes me just the red, the fork actually is um, is fine, but the name I just it's, it's just marketing. It is marketing. The whole thing is just <laughs> it's a marketing. Double edged sword. The whole thing is just marketing. It's not really, um, it's not really a, a step forward. I don't think it's you know it's. It's just, again, it's just another way of making something in carbon fibre. Oh, we've got this contact <laughs> yeah, with carbon right. fibre factory. What can we make with carbon fibre? And, well, what would know, it suits tennis rackets. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> now, what would the fork chassis look like? In 2030? In 2030. Or well, at least going forward, what would you like to see? Obviously, you've well, got... I'd love to see something like the Britain V-Twin. Um, did you ever see... Um, 
the Britain motorcycle. Manically. Look it up. Yeah, yeah, Google it now. Britain V Britain V Twin, Britain Racing. Uh spelt B-R-I-T-T-E-N. Um and it's um it's a beautiful hand built motorcycle built by a guy called John Britton in New Zealand. Uh, he literally made everything on his lathe and his milling machine. Oh wow! Um, if, there's, if you look, there's a sort of motorcycle news one where you've got a strip down. You can see the fork. Oh, the okay. Fairing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, it's amazing. It's just he was winning races with that um, when there were factory teams racing against him. It's yeah, and it's just beautiful um and he's he's not done so you know take a few steps back and we look at the way things are developed in the mountain biking mm -hmm. world and and to a certain extent in in a lot of engineering you find a problem and with your yearly product development cycle you find a few problems <laughs> they um, come up <laughs> but with that with that cycle you find your problem you design it out next year mm. You don't look at the customer and say, oh, he spent X amount of thousand pounds on my product. I better get that sorted, get him the retrofit. No, it's fixed next year. Look, yeah. we fixed this problem. Yeah. Um, instead of solving the issue. Yes. And by one step at a time, moving away from the core of what we were trying mm -hmm. to achieve, let's say, you know, if we think in abstract terms, we were trying to get around the trees really quickly. Mm -hmm. You know, that's yeah. what we were trying to do. But Some we got lost. Still trying, actually. <laughs> yeah. But we got lost, and year on year, we fixed all these problems, and now we've ended up with a bloody mess of a bike. Mm. Now, Britain looked at it and he said, Air, aerodynamics, drag, mm. that's the biggest thing. Yeah. I won't need to make as much power yes. if I don't, if I'm not as wide. Yes, true. So he built a motorcycle that from the front, so if you have a look at it from yeah. the front, it's insanely narrow. Right, okay, yes, yeah. And there you go. So are you suggesting really, the really bike of 2030 will be, what, back to 650 handlebars? No, no, <laughs> no, no, just no, no, I'm just, like... <laughs> no, I'm just saying that, that hopefully yes. somebody will step back and have a look and at, from a distance yeah. and go, okay, well, I'm not using someone else's engine. Why have they configured that engine? as a four cylinder in line mm -hmm. with all the cylinders like this yeah. and I'm going in that direction that's quite a lot of air you know almost you'd be better off with a four cylinder mm -hmm. in line but that's a really difficult packaging job so he went for the yeah. packaging job with a V twin allowed him to package it correctly yeah packaging is the big issue with bicycle design well I think in some ways we don't maybe kind of mountain biking coming from coming out of the shadow of road cycling in, in one area yeah, or yeah. another. You know, we didn't yeah. have that time for the, well, maybe we do, maybe I'm being unfair, but that kind of Graham Obrey figure of yeah. absolutely, oh my God, because now I think it would be quite an intimidating prospect and hard to get into to do something. I mean, there are people doing some cool stuff. So. Yeah, I mean, that Graham Obrey reference is really, really interesting because, you know, I noticed a time trial bike downstairs with the stupid saddle on it. Mm -hmm. And that's so that it fits inside the UCI, UCI rules. Yeah. So the front of the nose of the saddle is not allowed past the bottom bracket. Yeah. I'm pretty sure I don't know because I'm not a study of, no, I'm not a, 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 a student of road cycling or track or time trial. But that came around after the Graham Obrey thing. It did. It's yeah. also to stop you yeah, going recumbent, basically. Yeah. So, but, but why would you want to stop development? Mm. And that is because at our heart, in our history, there was an attempt to make cycling an athletic pursuit rather than a technological pursuit. Yes. Um, so we still have that throwback with the mountain biking, hence the stupid prototype rule and you know the, the idea that it has to be driven by human power through a chain and a series of sprockets. And yet somebody can win a World Cup with the chain gone. Mm. Now, yeah. do, has that broken the rules? Yeah, true. Did, 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 should the guy that came second have been yeah. 
saying, well, actually, that's outside of the UCI rules. So isn't it maybe then perhaps sort of indicative of the problem you were saying in that, you know, if you look, if we take perhaps a good distillation of sport in yeah. Formula One again, yeah. Yeah. you know, they look at the driver as a component yeah. Yeah. and they're yeah. trying to make the complete package, but also they get renewed and sort of every now and then they revisit the rules packages. Yeah. So people exploit things with new ideas. So if if the UCI change, shook up their rules, then maybe so, people would. So um, the, the, the thing with... Formula One that don't really want to see happening in bicycling is that that's won by the lawyers. Yes, you're certainly so, right. Yeah. So the, the, the reading of the rules, and it's almost like, you know, the rich people paying tax. You read the rules really carefully mm -hmm. and you work just within the rules. That there's enough loopholes and enough words that allow you to work within the the um, the outside yeah. of the rule, so that you're in actually the, within, law yeah. law abiding, but you've managed to avoid paying all your tax. Mm -hmm. um, and it's the same with Formula One: the the careful reading of the rules that allows you to exploit an idea that. The rule maker hadn't thought about. Mm -hmm. um, yes. So, and we started to see it in MotoGP to a certain extent, but you still see, you know, the rider has a much greater influence yeah. in MotoGP than in car racing. It kind of turns the whole thing into basically a very expensive game of Simon Says. You know, just like, oh, yeah. I didn't say Simon Says. Yeah, oh, yeah. double diffuser. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 But yeah, I, yeah. I think so. with. I think something coming from Formula One and using that as an example, wouldn't it in some ways, but I'm sure you'd be able to easily pick holes in it, it'd be cool if it said, you know, say in a couple of years down the line, say 2022, these, you know, this is the formula for that year. Mm -hmm. We've got um, perhaps maybe the total number of riders would come down, which I'm not sure I'm for or against really, mm -hmm. but we're going to have, uh, say, a tyre sponsor for the whole series, which is going to distribute money between the teams. Because yeah. something like that, I think about some people are just on bad tyres, for instance, and they just yeah. can't really do But you know what I mean? And then be like, who's which team can actually develop the best bike as opposed mm. to, you know, because you see people, you know, privateers ha rather buying bikes and yeah. sometimes, you know, having a new freedom after leaving a factory team just because. Yeah. Well, I mean, there's two really good examples of that this year with um, the Italian guy um, who's had a couple of, Top ten, and and David Trummer. Yeah, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So the both of them. I mean, the Italian guy is literally going to World Cup races in his van, mm -hmm. um, and it does make you wonder. Actually, you know how many? There's not that many people thinking that hard about how to make mountain bike faster in mountain biking. There are a few people thinking, you know, outside the box for sure. But, you know, when you get to a situation where the, the highest paid guy last year is, you know, getting paid, I don't know, over a million. Mm -hmm. Let's just pick a million because it's a <laughs> round number. And, um, you know, he's getting paid a million. He's got eight races to do. Yeah. That's 125 grand per race. Well, that'd be just and, about... And you can yeah. still have a puncture. Yeah. <laughs> it's, yeah. We're 30 years into mountain biking. We're paying guys a million quid to do eight races in a year. Mm -hmm. And for that 125 grand, we couldn't have invested enough to not have a puncture. Mm. Um, what's, the motor, what's the motorbike response to punctures? Um, well, if, you, if you're riding in that kind of environment, so for instance, you're doing a, a long race where you're going to be hitting stuff blind, you're talking about you know, a long distance enduro, or like a desert race, a rally mm -hmm. moose cycle desert race, they just use mooses. So mm -hmm. it's a full moose. So the, the well, tire. Is, is the meat tenderized or is it just put straight in? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm being an that's, idiot. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> there's no no inner tube at all. There's no air at all. You've literally got a 
um, a closed cell nitrocellular yeah. elastomer in a tube mm -hmm. that gives you a, a certain amount of pressure when you actually put it on. Mm -hmm. um, you can still have a wheel failure. You can hit something so hard that you can ding a wheel. Um, you can still have failures of other types. But if a puncture is going to mean you lose the race, then in most other sports, it's solved. Mm. Yes. yes um, and it still it. hasn't been solved in mountain biking. And it's not beyond the wit of man to do so. Um, no, you, it's... But I think that sometimes, you know, I think tyre companies are a good example of this. Mm. So busy fighting each other, Mm. They forget they're actually. Do you know what I mean? They're not actually interested in making a step forward. Is the they're, truth? They're, they're better interested in selling Some more tires. tires. Yeah, yeah, yes, that's, which is, and yeah. That's their job. Yeah. So we shouldn't criticize yes, that. No, that's yes. their job. Um, but in terms of, uh, in terms of the paddock, um, you could do it yourself. I mean, geez, twenty years ago, I took a decent downhill tire. And I, I bought a pot of rubber solution like this, mm -hmm. a massive pot, painted the whole of the inside of the tyre, mm -hmm. painted the whole of the outside of a half blown up inner tube, mm -hmm. put the two things together, mm -hmm. quickly popped it onto a rim and then blew the inner tube up so that the inner tube is at the right size for the tyre, mm -hmm. for, for the tube. Yeah. And then I tried put it on my wheel and tried to puncture it. Could not do it. Yeah. I had, you know, 15 or 20 holes in the inner tube, mm. but because the tyre was it's tough enough, sealed. it didn't... I've never thought of that. No one else has either, but it's not... I, I'm, not yeah. I'm, I'm not a genius, but, yeah. no, that's but, but that's a, just a five quid pot of... Yeah, I've always thought of doing, like, I mean, it's the old trick of lots of talcum powder in a tyre to yeah. keep it sliding, Yeah, which I thought was where you're going from, but... But no, but, no, yeah. and... And that solved the that solved the inner tube tear, and it and it gave you something that you could use as a cushion to stop the tire tearing. Yes. So. Um, and we, I, I destroyed the wheel in doing so. I, mm -hmm. that, that, there were a lot of big, big dings in the rim. I was literally just riding at breeze blocks and yeah, you know, wincing, and I could not make it puncture. Now, for a privateer racer that's got a job, that painting in a tube is not really sustainable mm -hmm. but if that's your job yeah and it's 125 grand yeah but that might not be the answer now you know yes, you no, could it, you could actually ask someone but going, in another industry for for an idea but going forward it sounds like so we've got inner tube technology from what 15 years ago you did that <laughs> we've got single pivots so this, we've got an old honda we've got I mean, hopefully less pretentiously named Forks at the very least. I'm so, really hoping. And the, hopes and, on that. and the Britain was from the late eighties, <laughs> early nineties. Yeah. But but this is this is a this is a occurring theme, a reoccurring theme all the time. And you know, when I look at technology, when you look at new ideas, the Romans or the Victorians did them already, mm. essentially. Mm -hmm. um, there's nothing that we can't learn from those guys. Um, we, we we just need to um, sort of Pivot adapt it yeah. to our industry. You know the yes. the, the basic principles of engineering. Um, we're all done. You know, it's you know it's the new seven bridge that's falling down, not the not the suspension bridge that Isambard Kingdom yeah. Brunel built, yeah. which he built with links, so you could potentially hold the links and replace a rusty one. You know, you could potentially fix this. Yes, yeah. That bridge isn't falling down. The new one is. You know, it's not It's not even my age. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. I'd want warranty on that if I built this bridge. And there's a, you know, there are so many Roman bridges um, throughout Europe that yeah. is still... All the aqueducts they've oh, got in, um, yeah, yeah. in Nîmes, yeah. Yeah, S that it's still standing and still doing the job. Um, there's not much we can, you know, learn from those guys. Yeah. And so, yes, for, you know, for looking at the gearbox, you go back, there's probably something in the Victorian archives yeah. that will do it. It is, and I, I think that, you know, the whole, this consumer, we, this consumer culture 
Mm. We've got it, mm. it's it permeates everything and it's insidious. You know, it's it's not just a case of we have so many symptoms, but actually, you know, like you said, we've got bridges that are falling down, the you know, like the the sort of the throwaway culture mm. is is so prevalent. We were just yeah. actually talking before we started filming about um you know, I was watching something on um so I listened to something about the fashion the textiles yeah, industry. Yeah. And the mm. throwaway fashion as they call Fast it. Fast fashion. Yeah. yeah. That's and just, you know, it's so it's so staggering, and the interesting thing is, they've got the same um, problems now. That basically one of the persons on this program is, without going into the nuances, yeah, yeah. how much hype, but basically saying that we have to keep this fashion going to support the people in the yeah in the sweatshops and give them jobs, which is obviously you know I'm not going to get into that. Yeah. It's the same conversation we were having in those Victorian times about the workhouses. Yeah, and you know that. And the more you find out about things, the the sort of bleaker our sort of modern version of capitalism looks. Um, but you know, the, the, there's just a lot of people saying, you know, the future of cars and mountain biking is um, electric and battery power, and you know, you don't have to do very much. Um, investigation to find out how important those minerals rare earth minerals now are mm. and how people are being exploited mm. um, to extract those minerals mm. and you know, almost everything we do in the rich world has that repercussion back down but we should try to minimise it. Yes. Yes. You know, no, and you know, you know, without you know, without turning into a hippie sort of hair shirt hippie, it's it's something we should think about. Um is an electric bicycle a good idea? Um then it's not a bicycle, it's a motorcycle. Mm. And it's a really shit one. Um, <laughs> I mean, I can hear Steve Jones stirring yeah. in the distance. <laughs> yeah, and he's got a perfectly good motorcycle in his garage and it just stays there because it's too lazy to get out and ride. <laughs> um, uh, but, and we've had some great times riding mountain bikes and we've had some great times riding motorbikes. But we won't have any great times riding e-bikes because why am I riding this half-developed piece of junk? The weak point of the bicycle is the rear derailleur. Mm. And now you're putting an extra 400 watts through it. You were just talking about well, how long a drivetrain well, doesn't last. Essentially like strapping, I guess, PSR into your down tube and hoping for the best. Yeah. <laughs> <You know? laughs> well, perhaps we're less complaining from PSR than himself. Yeah. But, you know. Come on, mate. Well, before, dig in. <laughs> I, think, uh, I think as we get to that, you know, conveniently pricky, prickly subject... Yeah. It's probably a good enough time to call it there before we start oh. really going down, oh, yeah. going down the down rabbit, the rabbit hole. hole. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You no, know, that's cool. You can say what you want about capitalism here, but don't you dare get started on e-bikes because they'll be at our gates. Oh. They won't go away. <laughs> <laughs> Steve. <laughs> yeah. But thank yeah. you so much. Hey, for, no worries for the chat and the. Well, it's been a real eye opener for me. So. Oh, it was quite good fun. Yeah. yeah. No, it was ace. But thank you very much. No worries, dude. Cheers. Cheers. Nice. That's great.